that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. He has been referred to as the real life Iron Man. He is the co-founder and CEO of Tesla, CEO of SpaceX, founder of The Boring Company, co-founder of Neuralink, founder of PayPal, and co-founder of OpenAI. According to Forbes, he is the 20th richest person in the world with a net worth of about $31.8 billion. He is Elon Musk, and here are his 10 rules for success. They put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And it's then a lot of work. That, that the, all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, Great. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. Okay. I like your work ethic. So, all right. Thanks, Thanks. Elon. Uh, you need to work, if you, if, depending upon how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Um, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hard up, we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day, uh, and I was coding at night, seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So uh, work hard, like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. Um, and I mean, if you do the simple math, say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as done, as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. Have a high pain threshold. <laughs> That's it. Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying, which is that starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Okay, that's, um, that's generally what happens. Because um, when you first start a company, there's lots of optimism and things, things are great. And then, so happiness at first is high. Then you encounter all sorts of issues. Uh, and happiness will steadily decline, <laughs> and then you'll go through a whole world of hurt. <laughs> That's, and then eventually, you'll, if you succeed, and in most cases, you will not succeed. Um, and, and Tesla almost didn't succeed, came very close to failure. Um, then if, if you succeed, then after a long time, you will finally get back to happiness. <laughs> People want to be more like you. Really? I, so, and you know what, for the fate of humankind, I think it would be great to have more Elon Musks. So what do we need to do to become more like Elon? Uh, I don't know if it's, I think it maybe sounds better than it is. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, uh, I mean, honestly, like, like, there's a friend of mine who's got a great saying about creating a company, um, which is uh, creating, try, trying to build a company and have it succeed is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Um, <laughs> well, so, I mean, what tends to happen is it's sort of quite exciting for the first several months yeah. of, of starting a company, yeah. and then then reality sets in, things don't go as well as planned, yeah. customers aren't signing up, the technology or the product isn't working as well as you thought. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and then can, that can sometimes be compounded by a recession, um, and uh, it can be very, very painful for several years. Um, so I think, um, frankly, starting a company, you, I would advise people to have a high pain tolerance. Yeah. People do not uh, do not think critically enough. I mean, there's critical thinking is a skill in short supply, where people you, people take too many things as they assume too many things to be true without sufficient basis in, 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 in that belief. Um, so um, it's very important that people closely analyze what, what is supposed to be true and, and, and try to build up, try to say, let's, let's analyze things from first principles, not by, not, not by analogy or not by convention. Um, 
if you, if you assume things are true by convention, which is actually what most people do, um, then ha it's difficult to gain insight into what c how things can be bettered. Um, so, you know, in any argument or, or, or any sort of train of thinking, um, you want to make sure that your, the underlying premises are valid and applicable, and um, and uh, you know, and and then in reaching a conclusion that the conclusion you're reaching is necessarily driven by the underlying premises and the interconnection between those premises. That may seem like a really simple thing to say, but most people don't do that. Um, I thought, so it's really the foundation of rational thought. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the, the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like, um, just a little game, um, or you know, the <laughs> some improvement in photo sharing or something. If it if it has if it has a small amount of of good uh, for a large number of people, um, that's I mean I think that's that's fine. Like stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. People tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. It's one thing if you've got you know a mortgage to pay and kids to support, and that if you were to deviate from your job that, well, how are you going to feed your family and pay the rent and, okay, that's understandable. But let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever, the, what, what do you, what do you risk? You know, you're not going to starve. I mean, right. it's, it's really, certainly not in any kind of modern economy. It's so easy to earn enough money just to live somewhere and eat food. Um, mm -hmm. You could, you know, that's, that's, that's any, I mean, yeah. Uh, very easy to do. So right. I don't know what, you know, what are they what are they afraid of? They're, they're mostly afraid of uh, failure, I think. Or, yeah. but yeah. people should be be less risk averse when there's not much at risk. So you got to make sure that that you that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It, it has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier, where um, if you're a new company. I mean, unless it's like some new industry or, or new market that, if it's an untapped market, or then then uh, you have more ability to. You know, this this the standard is lower for your product or service. But if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. And they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, uh, you know, an entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not, it can't just be slightly better. It's got to be a lot better. Mm -hmm. if, if you're creating a company or if you're joining a company, uh, the most important thing is to, uh, attra is to attract great people. So either be with, join a group that's amazing, that you really respect, or if, you, if you're building a company, you've got to gather great people. I mean, all a company is is a group of people that have gathered together to create a product or service. And so depending upon how talented and hardworking that group is and the degree to which they are focused uh, cohesively in, in a good direction, that will determine the success of the company. So do everything you can to, to gather great people uh, if, if you're creating a company. Constantly seek criticism. Yeah. Uh, a a well a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold, um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends. Um, usually, your friends know what's wrong, but they don't want to tell you because they don't want to hurt you. Um, so they lift you up, so sort of you're. Yeah. yeah. So they, you know, they say, "Oh, I wouldn't encourage my friends, so I'm, t I'm not going to tell him what I think is wrong with this product." Yeah. It doesn't mean your friends are right, uh, but very often they are right, mm. um, and you at least want to listen very carefully to what they say. And to everyone, if you're looking for, basically, you, you should take the approach that that you're wrong. Um, you know that, or that that you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong. Don't just follow the trend. So um, you may have heard me say it to, to, that it's good to think in terms of 
the, the physics approach of first principles, uh, which is rather than reasoning by analogy, you boil things down to the most fundamental truths you can imagine and you reason up from there. And this is a good way to figure out if, if, if something really makes sense or if it's just what everybody else is doing. Um, it, it, it's hard to think that way. You can't think, think that way about everything. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. Um, and that framework was developed by, by physicists to figure out counterintuitive things um, like quantum mechanics. So it's really a powerful, powerful method. People who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. <laughs> How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> But, but when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is... We've done it. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil uh, Armstrong, yeah. Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that um, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive.